Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 through 20. If you're new here, the old joke is when you have it, say amen, because nobody brings Bibles to church. <laughs> but some of y'all are like the, uh... oh, I did it again. I blanked on this joke last time I told it. Never mind. Just let's edit that one out. Some of y'all have it memorized, like the Masoretes, like the Masoretes, the people who preserved the text. That's what I was trying to say like five months ago, and I blanked the same way. Sorry for messing that one up. If you got a digital Bible, if you don't have any Bible, it's okay, because guess what? We'll put it on the screen for you. It's 2024. Matthew chapter 7. This is Jesus speaking, Sermon on the Mount, Matthews 5, 6, and 7. We're almost done with the whole Sermon on the Mount. Y'all scholars after this. Jesus says in verse 15, watch out. Everybody say, watch it. False prophets are near. They come to you in sheep's clothing. Nah. But inwardly, they're like a ferocious wolf. How many have heard the story of the three little pigs, somebody? I know y'all didn't like that. Well, this is the real version that God is warning us of here. They come inwardly like ferocious wolves, though they look like sheep. Verse 16, by their fruit. Everybody say fruit. We're not talking about apples. You will recognize them. Think of it like this, he says. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes? No. Do they pick figs from thistles? No. Likewise, every good tree bears what kind of fruit? And every bad tree bears what kind of fruit? A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into what? Fire. It's dead. It's no good. Get rid of it. Take it to ashes because it's not alive. It's not good. Thus, by their fruit, their, their fruit, people, by their, T-H-E-I-R, fruit, you will recognize them. We're not just talking about people, but we are not limited to just the kind of fruit you eat with your salads. My title today is Protecting Your Treasure. Protecting Your Treasure. So good to see so many faces in here. My sisters and brothers, this is what it's about. When we, uh, oh, you can clap for that. Someone wanted to clap. They get scared to clap in here. Someone got to start the train and then they all do it. Let's try it. Let's try it. I'll, Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that, look at that. See, that's how it works. Why don't you be first? Be brave, be first. Who wants to be a first clapper today? Come on, somebody, first clap. Look at y'all clapping at the same time, no. You got to learn the word of God. You got to learn how to worship. You got to learn how to have gratitude. And that's why we teach praise. It's not because we just want to get you excited to make you feel good. We want you to change so you are good. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I didn't come to talk about that, but it's good. God is good. And if he's in you, you've got something good to be grateful for. So when we started the church, it'll be seven years old in January that we launched. Seven years, four venues all over St. Charles County. And there's the mighty rushing wind that God always reminds us he's here through the vent system. There was a friend of mine who had a pond. In fact, some of y'all have been baptized there. And at the time, you wouldn't know the pond. It was on this plot of land. You wouldn't know the pond was there because it was covered in trees and weeds and bushes. And it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. But the idea was that we would clean it up. And then there was a poison ivy. How many like poison ivy? I'm allergic to poison ivy. And uh, I remember this conversation. And this is, you know, I'm a new pastor. They're trying to be respectful, and I'm trying to help get in the weeds, literally, me and two others. And I said, hey, just FYI, I'm allergic to poison ivy. And they're like, oh, there ain't no poison ivy out here. <laughs> yeah, there was, Mike. And so during the, uh, during the cleanup, it was me and two others, uh, Nate and Big A. Y'all might know who I'm talking about. And uh, they're still due to my heart, and I love them a lot. 
But at the time, I'll never forget, uh, the trees, were, got, we're cutting the trees down. We're actually cutting timber down, like timber. And I remember Big A said, um, now if I tackle you, just know it's out of love. And I'm like, he's, like, he's a big guy. I'm, I'm, he's like two of me. And I'm like, okay. And what he was trying to warn me of is that when they cut that tree, if it falls my way, he's going to make sure I'm safe. And what was really special is that he did it for the sake of my role and our friendship, but he was protecting me from stuff I didn't even know was dangerous. I'm like, hey, let's cut some stuff down. I'm from Chesterfield. I had poison ivy once. I got it walking to Chesterfield Mall. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So the trees were dangerous, depending on how they, how they fell, and we were trying to clean that up. And I just thought about that moment, how the trees were potentially deadly to me. And you think about your surrounding, people are like trees. And, and situations are like trees in your life. And, and God warns us about checking the root of the trees and the fruit, the plant, the things that are bearing in your life, because just because it roots doesn't mean it's good. It could be actually bad. And so he then ties it. Jesus is so blunt. How dare he be blunt and unpolitically correct in 2024? We don't want to hear it. Sorry, that's the Bible. That's why we started this church. He's one minute talking about bad seed, good seed. Next minute he's talking about wolves and sheeps in the same passage. So I think he's referring to bad seed being the offspring of what could be a wolf that looks like a sheep in your life. It looks like a sheep. A wolf in sheep's clothing does not look threatening. It looks gentle. It looks sweet, like the harlots in, in Proverbs. Gentle, sweet, but a wolf in sheep clothing that came to destroy and to create destruction. You see, God has given us this amazing truth of the word. It's, it's the only word that's truth. It's not the AI version that makes it not truthful. It's the living word of God that is the only truth. And so he's given us that. It's a gift that we have it. And it's our duties to protect it. You see, with this truth comes the ability to navigate the world in a heavenly manner. You can navigate this nasty, ugly world. Sometimes it's pretty. We went to Forest Park. That was pretty. But there's some real ugly parts that God still gave you away through his word to navigate in a heavenly manner. That's the whole point. To stand tall knowing you have the power of God at your fingertips to lead and guide you into all things. And part of having the truth, how many knows the scripture to whom much is given, much is required, says Paul. Right, so part of having the truth is protecting it from the wolves that look like sheep. You're getting it because it becomes contaminated or corrupted by the world and its anything goes ways. The enemy loves one thing, loves compromise to truth. If the world can get you to compromise God's truth, it no longer has the power to do what God gave it to you for. Think about that. If you kill the potency of what's good and you wonder why it's no longer doing good, it's because we've saturated with the contamination of what's bad. A, a good tree can't bear bad fruit, he said. A bad tree can't bear good fruit. So process that with me as we go. Will you protect the greatest treasure that ever has and will exist? The truth of the gospel, the good news. It's the good news. It bears good fruit. And when your gospel starts bearing bad fruit, guess what the gospel is not? That. The gospel is the good news. Just Google it. You know it's accurate. Sometimes Google's right. Touch your neighbor, tell him, protect your treasure. Protect it. So my question is, what trees today, Jake, hey, Jake, looking dapper, bro, are surrounding you? What trees 
are surrounding you today? Good trees? Bad trees? Both? A lot of trees? No trees? I don't know. As we are focused on ourselves, we fail to look around what trees are near us, what, what's bearing in our garden that we're not noticing. What's causing us to make it about us and our little thing when really God says, I got you. Why are you making it about you? God's bigger than that. That's not the church. The church is not a tail-bearing gossip machine. The church is the living word of God manifested into the world. So which one are you, the good church or the bad church? There's only one real church. If somebody feels conviction today, good, because that's the word of God. That's what it's meant to do is sharpen you, make you better. It's not about us. It's about God's will and purpose. That's why it's hard as a pastor to make hard decisions and change people's roles and change positions in the church because it's not about me or how they feel. It's about the gospel and what God said to do. People are always mad at me. I don't like it. It's what God called us to do. It's to just do our best, and he works out the rest. It's all for the greater good of God's mission. And to love is to do the truth, and to help grow and root and cultivate change so we can grow spiritually out of immaturity and grow mature in the Lord. That's what sanctification is. If we don't ever do that, something's wrong with our walk. We have to grow in understanding and learn we can improve something in ourselves. And maybe these trees around us are contributing and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. We are capable of failing and falling to the impressions of our surroundings. I think we all start as little children with a good intention. But when we grow up, Good intentions can become bad problems. Why? Because we let other people into the conversation. We let other uh, influence into the conversation, and it no longer becomes what it meant, was meant to be in the beginning, and that's kind of like your walk with God. God has a reason for you to start walking, but if we're not careful, it can go somewhere else. Well, God said he never leaves me. No, he didn't, but you're walking away from him. Like, is there any accountability in 2024? God's grace doesn't mean it's a pass for anything goes. It means I'll forgive you, but you got to walk through by faith. You got to have faith or grace is wasted oil. Are you protecting your treasure? What's the treasure? The word of God, the truth of this gospel. This is the treasure we're talking about today. Our dreams and purpose can fall victims to wolves that look like sheep. Everybody go, bah, that's no wolf. Come on. Did you see the socks I made from that guy? Those are sheep. Matt, he looks really impressive, but he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. But you wouldn't know because he looks like a sheep and he acts like a sheep. Jesus is teaching us to recognize the wolf, how? By the fruit of what they're bearing. It's not how they look, it's how they act. It's not what you say, it's what you do. Now don't get this all twisted, somebody on Facebook who wants to just hate Jesus for anything and this bash one seat church, people ask the weirdest questions. That doesn't mean um, you have to do works to be saved, that means your works are a testimony of your salvation. You see the difference? And if there's no testimony, no demonstration, what is God doing inside? Because Jesus says you will bear fruit of what's happened. Is this making sense? You know why the farmers were so successful in the books of the New Testament? It's because they understood the agriculture and Jesus spoke to what they knew. He's good. He's good like that. You got to recognize what you're looking at by the fruit of what it bears. 
here's the dangerous part. All fruit grows. All fruit grows. I just remembered, I just had a triggered flashback. Circa 1988, Pleasant Ridge, Chesterfield, Missouri. That's when cul-de-sacs had the thing in the middle with plants. Does anybody remember when cul-de-sacs had bushes in the middle? They weren't just open. Is that like a St. Charles County thing where they're all open? In Chesterfield, there was a, like a curb, and we would, bike, we would ride our bikes around that thing, circle, and pretend we were like in the Goonies, Mike. I wanted to be little Mikey. How many remember the Goonies? <laughs> and they had these bushes in the middle with these little bitty baby tomatoes, right? They're tomatoes, right? My mom says, those aren't tomatoes, Jeffrey. They're poisonous berries. Don't eat those. Well, yeah, I mean, the bush don't really look like a tomato bush or wherever tomatoes grow. Again, I'm, I don't know. I'm pretty agriculturally ignorant until I got in God's word. I learned a few things. But, but, you know, they look okay, so I might as well try it, right? Just because it looks the part doesn't mean it's good for you. And all fruit grows, even the little berries on the bushes that are poisonous and will make you sick. Look at this. What is the first two words Jesus says in verse 15? Watch out! Watch out! What do y'all do if you're walking outside and somebody says, watch out! Are you going to be like, it's fine. I know what you're going to do. Oh, Jesus! Am I right? And if you're not saying Jesus, you need to work on your, you need to ask for forgiveness and say Jesus instead of that. <laughs> You know, you know you're telling the truth now. Jesus is saying, he's not saying, watch out. He's saying, watch out, man. It's a wolf. It's a wolf going to eat you. And when the wolf eats you, it's over. I don't like wolves. I don't even like raccoons, those dang things live in my sewers. I like nothing with teeth. It's furry. Even cats are the, well, I'm allergic. I won't go there. Michelle and her three cats, when we, when we met, I said, Michelle, it's them or me. <sighs> Praise God. She sold the cats. I wasn't sure, though. I had a 50-50 on that one. I was like, all right, God, I'm rolling the dice here. It's the cats or me. You better sell those cats if you want me. Whew, okay, they're gone. No, what I'm trying to say to you, though, is like if someone says watch out to you, you're immediately on your toes like, what's up? So when Jesus says watch out, there's a reason. And it's not just because, eh, it's fine. Let's go have lunch after church. It's good. It was a good word. It's watch out, man. You want to be eaten? You want to be the little pig who couldn't, couldn't swim or whatever, and she's soup now for the wolf. But it looked like a sheep. Don't be so naive, church. Look at the trees around you. Look at the roots bearing around you. Don't be so naive to what looks godly when it's not. If it doesn't match the word, guess what it's not? Godly. That's how we know. It's a mirror. Can you tell I get excited about this? All fruit grows, and Jesus says, watch out. So are we looking or living blindfolded? Do we walk around life like this? I'm a Christian. I can't see nothing because I got my blindfold on of heaven's light shining in my face. What are we doing? You're supposed to rescue people. We're supposed to rescue people. And perhaps we are poisoning our good roots, and it's not just them that are affected, but we're affected by what we're letting into the soil. How many watch the news? Thank you. Amen. It's not rocket science. You're affected by what you let in the soil. So when we say amen in church and then we go back to watching that junk on TV or listen to that or watching this or that, guess what we're doing? We're letting it in the soil. I'm a strong Christian. You were. You let enough of that in, guess what happens? You stray from the word, and there's only one strength in you, and that's Jesus. And when you stray from God's ways, you're, you're like the prodigal son. You're running off to party land. Guess what happens? 
Oh, God, I don't know what I did. Let me back, Father. That's what the prodigal son did. Let me back. He begged. The father was there, thankfully, by grace, with open arms. Right, Vince? In fact, the father was running to him before he was running to the father because the father knows all. But we don't take advantage of God like that. We honor God. And all fruit grows. So watch what's growing. Enemy wants you to ignore what's happening inside of you and just worry about them. It's easy to see it on them. We talked about that. It's easy to see, but it's not easy to see this way in ourselves. And understanding what's rooting around you is rooting in you, is relevant to actual spiritual maturity and growth and change. You keep getting caught up for 10 years in the same petty church conversations, guess what's not happening? Growth and change. There's a reason we started this church, because we were so depressed from coming home from church and listening to people complain about what they did at church at lunch. Like, that is not, to me, what Jesus was doing out with his ministry. I felt like um, so superficial that I was becoming, this was church to me. It was like, hey, we go to church, you know, I play the guitar, we go home, we talk about all the annoying things that happened. Is that the Great Commission? No, that's the modern church, unfortunately, though, in most cases, unless... We go back to the Word and say, well, what is the church? What are we doing? Good and bad fruit both grow something. You keep pouring poison over your flowers. How do you expect flowers to grow when you keep poisoning them over and over and over, watching the same thing on social media? watching the same thing on Google Images, watching the same thing, looking at the same thing, listening to the same advice of the person who has no idea what they're talking about because they've never been through what you've been through, so why would you listen to them anyway? They have no understanding of what you even are trying to deal with, yet you're taking their advice and they're ruining your life. That sounds like a tree with bad fruit. I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist, but that, yeah, it is. Yeah. See, we all can apply this. You got to pile it up. So we cut those trees down and we trimmed up those bushes at that pond. And anybody that has like a parcel, that's what they call it out in the country, a parcel. Acreage, you got to pile it up. You can't just haul it off. What do you got to do to that thing? You got to burn it slowly, Mike. <laughs> or lights show up at your house. You, you do a burn and you get your burn permit. Get your burn permit, guys. You just put a light little burn on this big pile, and what happens? It slowly just turns to ashes over a few days. Jesus is talking about what happens to the trees that are not in the good vine, the good root here. We've also heard that passage. See, it all ties together. When it is not in Christ, it has no lifeline. It's like cutting the cord and expecting it to, to grow. It can't. It has to have the source behind it. And when you are from the wrong tree, it will, it will die, and it says it will wither, and it will be burned up because it's dead anyway. Now, the good news is you can change the wood you're in. You can change the pond you're trying to... Trying to uh, you know, clean up and make nice. And to do that, you got to get rid of the poison, ivy, branches, thorns. You got to pile it up for Jesus. You got to take all that mess you've been letting just stay in your garden, stay on your property, and pile it up for Jesus. Just because you cut it down, what happens when you cut something down and leave it? It grows again. Man, I got fungus growing on some astroturf. I'm serious. You just get one little speck of dirt and whatever chemistry. I'm not a chemistry guy. It grows green stuff. Just starts growing out of the out of the astroturf, Mike. Like uh, you know, like a wrap. Um, this at the lake, you know, it's like a it's like a board wrap. It's like astroturf material, and it's growing a plant. That means one little speck of bad seed can grow into a new forest of bad fruit. 
I wasn't even looking for that little speck to grow, Mike. I just saw it a year later. You don't even know it's growing, and it'll grow in darkness. It's like a fungus. The enemy's like a fungus to your walk. You got to pile it up. So we were piling that up because they ultimately were going to burn it because you couldn't haul it away. But what does piling that up for Jesus mean? How do I pile up my bad seed-rooted bushes in my life and trees today for Jesus? What does that mean? That means I'm going to take accountability today. I'm going to do an audit. How many know what an audit is? Everybody loves them. Most people think of tax audits. Item by item by item. Sometimes you need to spend a little time and slow your roll and audit your Christian faith and go, I've been coasting through this for years. What if I'm missing something now that I'm 50 or now that I'm 30? What if I'm missing something because I never slow down to audit my faith? Audit, does it look like Jesus? What would Jesus do? That's what piling it up means. You're creating a burn pile of all the hot mess that's been keeping you the same, leaving you in this pattern that only bears bad fruit in your life. They say, oh, my parents did it. I'm cursed. It's a generational curse. You're not cursed. Quit blaming your genes for continuing to make bad decisions. Fix it. You've got the joy of the Lord, the strength of the Holy Spirit, and yet you can't break a curse from something your grandpa did a hundred years ago or however because it's in your blood. What kind of blood do you got then? I thought you had the blood of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, which one's greater, from heaven or from earth? My grandpa's blood, who was an alcoholic, who did, who, who hurt women, who did whatever, who, who was, who was to physically abusive, that's in my blood, greater than the blood of Jesus on the cross for me, over my body, over my family, over the generations that come. Which one's greater? Quit lying to yourself. So, you feel that? Good. That's what the word is supposed to do. It's not Ferris Bueller. Bueller. It's, it's not a library. I never went to the library. That's why, because it's boring in there. I need energy. God wants your heart. So we're piling it up. We're protecting what is sacred for the generations to come. And my babies. I'm protecting this word for my babies. They can hate me all day, but they know daddy stood for the word even when they didn't like him because that's what Jesus said. So that's what will happen when you do an audit. Sometimes you'll do an audit through other life events, like when you become a father, when you get married, you'll do an audit. Does anybody know what I'm saying? You'll go, okay, I'm going to do something different. So what if we treated Jesus with the same respect and we audited Paul? Paul says, I die daily. That means he's auditing himself daily. Like there's always room for improvement. Don't make yourself crazy auditing yourself every 10 minutes because you have OCD with, with sin auditing. That's not what I'm saying. But look in the mirror once in a while and go, God, am I missing something? Is my environment good? Do I got people hurting me? Do I need to apologize to them? Do I need to think broader than myself in this? Am I poisoning myself by doing that every week, putting that seed on my... I didn't think it was that big a deal. It is a big deal. Because this one little speck is all it takes. Our job is to protect our treasure, our treasure is the Word of God. That's what the treasure is. You can burn up bad trees and get away from the wolves. This is good. If you're going to write something down, this is it. You got to separate so you don't keep getting saturated by the enemy. It's good. Think about it. You're saturated because you won't depart from the problem, depart from the person, depart, depart from the thing that keeps saturating your, your heart, your mind. It's like the news. It's depressing. I'm not saying don't watch the news, but 
Moderation, baby. Like it can destroy your mind if you live in that. Y'all can stand this morning. What an amazing day today at One Seed Church. It's about the people. The people are the, are the breath of life in this room. So when you decide to clean it up in your audit, <laughs> Jesus is going to show you something beautiful that you didn't know was underneath all the thorns and the weeds and the bushes and the, and the ivy. That's how he does it. It's God's cleanup process. And it will protect you from false prophets. Because remember he said, watch out. He protects us. What do we protect? His treasure. He protects us. We protect his word, his treasure. So a funny thing about the story when Big A said he was going to protect me and put me on the ground if that tree came towards me, is we later did our first public baptisms at One Seed Church at the finished product of this pond. We have all these photos and videos, and it's a fond memory of me and many people in this room. What went from bad seed turned to good because we burned it up. We burned it up. And here's, here's what's funny. Here's what's funny. You're going to laugh at this. I had scars on my ankles for many years to come from what? Poison ivy cleaning that hot mess up. But we were taking a hot mess and turned it into holy ground to baptize people in the name of Jesus. And that's what we did. In the beauty of the nasty pond, we baptized them and, and, and it's covered them by the cleansing of the word. The word, the water is the word. It's cleansing. And so we did that. But I think it's funny that we, God will leave you with a scar like Jacob or he'll leave you with a limp like Jacob because when the scars there don't hurt anymore, it don't even itch. But I remember what God did. Scars you can talk about. Wounds still hurt. I don't like wounds, but I'm thankful for scars. The scars are your testimony, somebody. That's why God put you here. It wasn't supposed to be bunnies and daisy dandelions in a field of bliss all the time. It was supposed to be messy because that's what got the person into the house and you change a life for eternity from your story. So that's what it's about. That's why there's pain. That's why there's suffering and sickness and trials and tribulations and storms and waves on the water. That's why it's not always just calm waters. Because if it was, God does his best work in the storm. You got to have a storm so God can calm it for you. I trust in God because he heard and he answered. And guess what? He will never, ever fail. He will never, ever fail. Come on. So I trust in God. In God. Come on. My Savior. If you mean it, sing it like that. I, I trust, trust in God. God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God. One more time. I trust in God. I trust in God. My Savior.
and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will Just bow ahead, lift your hands. This is prayer worship right now. You'll never fail, God. He will never fail. I trust in you, God. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Every head bowed and eyes closed, lift a hand with me if you're willing to be different today from yesterday. God, we're here. We're fresh today, God. Your word is ripe in this house. I can feel it by the power of the Spirit. I know your, I know your presence, God, and people need you today. They're confused, they're hurting, and they want answers. But God, what matters is that you're not going to always give us what we want, but you give us what we need. We trust. You heard, and that's why we continue to what, Lord? We continue to trust in you. And we're so thankful for that. We give you so much glory today.